or do you take a strong whip against errant members of your party? That debate has been raging on various uh, media platforms, especially on social media. I was reading uh, one of the groups that uh, I follow. Uh, I'm a member of, and uh, one of my guests here is he, a member of uh, called uh, the Hall of Intellectuals and the Diet of Intellectuals. <laughs> uh, those two groups have been debating uh, for some time how political parties can handle. Some people look at what is going on and think, is this a bit of political naivety? Is it a bit of lack of maturity in handling political matters? Another is saying, how does a party purify itself and make it stand clear on what it believes in and the standard it wants to set, especially in a country that has been uh, plagued by corruption and all other uh, forms of uh, malpractice? To discuss that with me tonight, I have, let me start with, former Guild President at Makere University, an advocate of the courts of judicature. I have too many lawyers on the, on the, on the show. I, I've switched lawyers on the show tonight. Ivan Boe. Ivan, very nice to have you. It's very nice to be here and to comply with the board. Uh, council, senior Council Nicholas Opio was talking about your... <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, my, my, my business. Yeah? <laughs> Where did you call it? <laughs> I guess you need to see me in the current state. <laughs> From the <laughs> National <laughs> Unity Platform, National Treasurer, an advocate of the courts of judicature, I have Benjamin Katana. Thank you, Charles. Good evening to you. Uh, Ramadan Karim, to our Muslim brothers and sisters who are fasting. May Allah accept your fast. And a happy Easter weekend to the Christians. It's a pleasure to be part of this debate Thank you. tonight. And a frontliner, executive director at the Uganda Media Center from Mulanda in Tororo, Ofono Pondo. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charles. Good evening to our viewers. And uh, nice to have a debate with young people. I told you a while ago that I think I should be aging out mm. <laughs> so that uh, I leave the people who are still having milk teeth <laughs> to, to, to come to the platform. <laughs> you know? And uh, w w what happens when the actual young people raise up? Because they are younger people than these, these ones, and they're bigger in... Uh we, should, we should get worried, but yeah. um, with good mentorship, uh, there shouldn't be a lot of worry. Of course, mentorship also implies the older people are willing to mentor them, for mm. example, by bring them, now like on a show like this, we have two, three other older people, but also willing to learn and having the ability to learn. Those are critical you, you, you intersections. Might, you might be speaking uh, dry bones when they are old women uh, because they are, might, they are people older than you <coughs> Yes. Uh, that are not talking about uh, exiting the stage. You might find yourself in a bit of trouble. Well, you know we are born individually. Mm. Some decisions you make individually. Others you make collective. But at the end of the day, the back stops with you, the individual, to say, I've done my part, I'm exiting. Okay. Yeah. There's been a lot of interesting debate coming <coughs> out of uh, West Africa, particularly Senegal, Senegal, uh, where a 44-year-old with a 49-year-old uh, have uh, taken leadership, won an election. Uh, one was bad. The 49-year-old was supposed to be the candidate, but he was bad by court order because uh, a man who was actually celebrated when he came into power, Makay Sal, was beginning to develop ideas of how to stay longer <laughs> by the Senegalese. <laughs> <laughs> had different views and uh, <laughs> forced him to leave the stage. Yeah. Uh, let me actually start with you. There's another guest who's joining us. He's navigating traffic and should be joining us in a moment. Uh, we're going, we're moving towards... So that, uh, um, they're hounding me out of NUP. We are, we are moving to closer to... We're in a holiday season, so there's a lot of movement on the roads and the traffic is a bit difficult. Uh, oh, oh, let me start with you. Uh, many of our, maybe let me start actually with that letter that has come up. That is the latest coming out of the National Unity Platform. Party President Robert Senta Muchagulani, writing on the 27th, that was yesterday, 27th of March, has fired Matthias Impoga as Deputy national chairman for Buganda region. And he says the same reasons that were given for his, uh, the withdrawal of his nomination to the parliamentary commission uh, a while ago, 
and the saga that's been going on about the 500 million shillings, a total of actually, a, a actually a total of 1.7 billion shillings doled out to parliamentary commissioners as a service award. We've been debating a bit of that, and people are questioning why are you focusing a lot on uh, on this. But Benjamin, uh, le le let me start with you on that uh, latest development, suspension from office. On the sixth day of May 2022, while you served as leader of opposition in parliament, a position to which you are seconded by the party, you participated in a meeting in which you, together with three NIM-nominated parliamentary commissioners, allocated yourselves 1.7 billion Uganda shillings under the pretext of a service award. You personally allocated 500 million. This was an act of corruption and abuse of office which violated numerous laws, including Section 9.1 of the Leadership Code Act 2002, which prohibits leaders from taking part in meetings at which matters of personal interest to them are to be discussed. Uh, you can scroll it up a little bit more. Uh, we pick up the other bit. You have thus far failed to provide any satisfactory explanation for engaging in this action, which goes against the vision, mission, and objectives of the party. It also goes against Article 5.3, B and, w and F of the party constitution, which obligates party members to conduct themselves in a manner that does not bring disrepute to the name of the party, as well as practice accountable leadership. In accordance with Articles 6, 3, H, and 7, 1, E of the party constitution, I hereby suspend you from the position of Deputy President of the National Unity Platform for Central Region with immediate effect, and accordingly refer the matter to the National Executive Committee for further processing. Could you, Benjamin, uh, help our viewers understand this latest development from your party? What it means for the party? <laughs> it means what is written in the letter. <laughs> it means that the president, in exercise of powers given to him by the party constitution, has taken a decision to suspend one of his deputies, and he gives the reasons in that letter. And uh, he further mentions in that letter that he has also forwarded him to the National Executive Committee of the party for further processing. But well, basically, the, as you can see, the letter is about suspension, mm. not firing like you mentioned. Mm. So suspension is a temporary measure, pending the outcome of Wh the process that he refers to. What does your constitution actually provide? Would you be in a position to share mm. what uh, Article 6.3 uh, that he quotes in that letter and 7 1 say exactly. Basically, it talks about the powers of the president mm. to suspend the people that he has appointed to serve in the different offices. And further goes ahead to the constitution provides for mechanisms on how that is done. That upon suspension from office, then the person now can be referred to the National Executive Committee for confirmation of that action and uh, or that the executive com the national executive committee can say we don't approve this decision and uh, uh, so that means that the suspension will be lifted but if it approves then we will have to have a delegates conference mm. and then the new office bearer is brought into the equation yeah y but you, like you said if it's not approved then you'd have to go to that decision, the yes. suspension will be lifted because mm. it's a temporary measure. Okay. Yeah, it's not. If it is approved, yes. If you it have is approved, then you through. have, then the person will be removed from office, and there will be a process mm. for replacing, for bringing on board the replacement of the affected. Is is Mpuga's position as a deputy president of uh, NUP elective or appointive? Appointive. Yeah. That's how he came to office. He was appointed. By the party president. By the party president. Many people looking at what has been going on in NUP, and especially the saga around uh, Matthias Mpuga, believe that beyond the, alleg the allegations of corruption against him, that there has been a, pass a, 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 a political fight within the party between uh, especially the party president and this particular deputy. Well, I think that is unfounded gossip. Uh, first of all is that the, the now the affected officer that we are talking about did not assume the office of deputy president 
yesterday. And the party president did not get the powers yesterday. So if indeed he wanted to have him suspended for no reason, because like you seem to suggest that there are rumors that they have been having a problem, mm. he could have exercised such powers one year ago. He has not just got such powers. But I think the, the, what is happening is an attempt to divert public discussion from the event that triggered what we are discussing and what we are observing now. That there was an incident, and I think what for this to be appreciated better, we should not focus on the individuals, but what transpired. That if it were me or my brother Ivan here, in that position, and that event took place, the matter would still be handled in the manner it has been handled. That the conduct was found improper, that there was impropriety, as indicated in that letter and the various letters that have come out. And so decisions have been taken in respect to an event, but there are attempts to divert the discussion to be about individuals, which in my view is inappropriate. We've been joined on the show by Martin Ojara Mapenduzi. He represents uh, Baradege Laibi constituency in Gulu City. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ivan, uh, you've been watching, you've been following closely what's been going on in the national unity platform. And the question is, what does this mean for the party? Um, thank you so much. First and foremost, I think the latest letter is indicative of uh, the lack of leadership within the party. Leadership does not mean occupancy of a position. It means the sobriety of handling issues, how the governance is in the party how those that occupy those particular offices are exercising their powers within the confines of the law. Um, I love uh, Bobby Waini's songs. And one of them is uh, the Chuani song. In that Chuani song, it talks about elements of corruption, but also elements of faking particular identities to make ends meet and survival. NUP has a constitution that was registered 20 years ago. That was, uh, that was in 2004. That constitution has never been amended. And in that constitution, the president is the flag bearer. In that constitution, the president is not the head of the party. And whatsoever article that was quoted in that letter is not within the confines of that constitution. <laughs> uh, I've also not noted that whereas that I've read the letter and I, I've, I kept on wondering, when did a party president become an enforcer of the leadership code. At what point did it shift? Because it first, he made a decision, called him to resign, published on social media. Mm -hmm. Then we asked him to engage the necessary party organs, if existent. Then he said he referred the matter through the letter from uh, then the acting president, uh, Dr. Lina Zedriga. Dr. Lina Zedriga of which uh, they called uh, the, 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 national, the, uh, the National Executive Committee, uh, I don't know under which constitution, uh, they sat and made a decision on, on still on the issue of Mr. Mpoga resigning as the Commission of Parliament. Mm. Uh, and mm. finally, I saw a letter from the Secretary General 
talking about uh, the data that went to the speaker and what the speaker returned. I do not know at what point uh, he's engaging the issue of uh, now the deputy president, mm -hmm. of which I also, I can tell you that appointment was illegal. That position is not within the constitution. And if we are to follow the constitution as of 2004, which has never been amended, the president does not, the president is only a flag bearer. And I have minutes of a meeting that sat on uh, uh, of the minutes of 17th July, where Mr. Katana himself proposed that they elect only seven positions, and of which the seven, only three were in the constitution. The minutes, I have them here. But how, so, how, how, so how does that, I, I, Ivan, I, I'm listening to you, and I'm wondering, um, <laughs> you, you, discussing the topic? you, you, ha you, you <laughs> have, uh, how does a party deal with uh, a matter of serious concern, like uh, allegations of corruption against one of its senior leaders? The, uh, the, the party can deal with it, and it is within its right. Yes. But the same party must be governed by its own rules. The, the essence of the rules is to avoid abuse of the rules. Mm. Is that if we have a, a scenario, it shows how you're going to handle it. By you, 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 by many, m many people watching us and uh, many Ugandans are going to be saying, you know, he's talking a lot of legalese. We have a moral crisis. We have a question that needs to be dealt with. Um, the deputy president or whatever he is dipped his hand into a public till. He wasn't supposed to. He must be dealt with. And the party must demonstrate that it is serious about dealing with some of these issues. Uh, but, uh, at, at every point, w even if it's murder, a person is entitled to due process. I know very many people have children in schools. And at times, students go errant. But in the schools, there are, let's say, the disciplinary committee. It shows who sits on the disciplinary committee, how do you defend yourself in a disciplinary committee. And finally, if the disciplinary committee decides the way it decides, they either suspend you or even expel you from a school. Mm. So the struggle that no has today that makes them even incapable of objectively solving their problems is that they're acting on ev everything is illegal generally at the moment. Everything illegal generally. Ab initial. Politically, what does that mean? Politically is they need to go back on the drawing board and organize proper party structures following the constitution that has, these are the structures of that constitution. The National Congress, which is an equivalent of the Delegates Conference, they have the Central Executive Committee, they have the, the NEC. National Executive Committee. National Executive Committee. Then they have the uh, Regional Area Committees, uh, Regional Area Executive Committee, and they have the Constituency Committees, and then the Branch Why Committees. Why do they have to go through all that? Because uh, a party is ruled and governed through its organs. Where they are non-existent, that means it remains a few people, the president, secretary general, and probably uh, uh, a Mr. Katana somewhere, or uh, a, a Mr. Senyon somewhere, deciding as though they are the party, yet in actual sense they are not. Ofono Pondo, let me come to you. Um, uh, politics is about rallying the base. So far, developments in uh, national unity platforms suggest that actually Mr. Chagulanyan and his team are rallying the best. The best is, uh, the message is resonating with the best. Well, my brother Abu Dukatonto would say it is all politics stupid. <laughs> <laughs> As a paraphrase from it is economic stupid. And we usually, we usually say politics is a double-edged sword. I don't buy the alibi of the Honorable Mpoga apologists that they are now spinning. If I take Mr. Boy's own argument, he says that position of deputy president doesn't exist. In the constitution it does not. So if Mpoga accepted to occupy and has been carrying himself about 
in a position that doesn't exist. And he says, we have been taking him to be an intelligent person. Mm. So he has been hoodwinking us, because by the time he accepted to be appointed and installed into a position mm. that you are now saying doesn't exist. Yeah. So he's a fraud. He's a fraud, and therefore, he should not complain. You, the lawyers, say, if you want to go to the temple of justice, go there with a clean pair of hands. Mm. Secondly, there is no law in Uganda, not even our constitution, which says parties should have the same format of structures. Yes. That you should have the chairman, the president, the SEC, the NEC. No. You can, you can have your constitution which says only six people will make the decisions for the party, including yeah. appointment, nominating candidates to parliament, for election and so on and so forth. And they have different ways to discipline everyone's members. And so, now I don't want to go there because I've never bothered myself with the reading the constitution of NOP mm. or the structures of NOP. I want to give them the benefit of doubt mm. that they understand, they know, they appreciate what they're doing and where they want to take themselves. Mm. Now, this matter, I have said before, that this matter of Mpuga and uh, his uh, other colleagues in NOP, <coughs> I hope it doesn't divert us from the real issues of governance and accountability yeah. in our country, yeah. particularly where all this started from, Parliament of Uganda. I hope eventually when the NOP issues settle, we shall go back and hold our Parliament accountable, particularly its leadership on the various allegations that have been thrown against them. It is, it is in their own interest that they come clean on these allegations. But we, for now, we, let, let's discuss this. Now, <coughs> remember when this matter first exploded, Honorable Mpuga said he had never got the money. He went around the radio station saying he had never got the money. Now, from official account of parliament, we know that this money was actually paid out by borrowing from the parliamentary circle. By that lie alone, Honorable Mpuka ought to be held accountable by his party for denying what had actually taken place. Secondly, for me, this is my 25th year as a director. Since the president appointed me first as a director at the movement secretary and now. The president, our president, President Sewell Mitchell says, what you say in darkness mm -hmm. should be what you say in daylight. And they said, they, when they, this matter came to their, to their knowledge, they invited him to their meeting of leaders. And they asked him, and he admitted that indeed the money was paid to him. And the various undertakings that they asked him to, to take leave from the commission. And then somehow, the cause has half clever advisors. All advisors work level by half, whichever way you want to put it. I think the advisor him and said, look, you must, most likely you made a mistake. Why did you, first of all, admit that you got this money? Secondly, why did you accept, why did you apologize to them, wrongdoing? And secondly, he did not accept or resign. If he committed himself to his colleagues in a confidential meeting, I think he should have stuck to that agreement. But Public available information, it is his word against theirs. No, no, no. Mm. At least these other people have put theirs in writing. The leadership of NUP has put in writing. So I am bound to take somebody who put something in writing more seriously than someone who is recanting verbally because they can change. They can change their words because it's verbal, you can't easily. So, I would have expected him, as a gentleman, 
to say, let me commit what I committed in our confidential meeting. He has I think has I it has it issued a statement? I think he issued a statement. I think he, he, he has issued a statement about this is what I'm saying. Yes. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying having come out, I think he got advisors work level by half. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you remember that it took him a week or more to issue that written response. Okay. And the, the statement is about informality yes. of the meeting, yes. not the content. Yes. Of so of the so, so I, I think he issued it as an afterthought, having got advice from Mr. O, what, 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 what I want no, to hear so, from so for me, yes. from that standpoint, I fault him to a large extent to the mud he is now being rolled in. Because if he had done as his colleagues are now saying, because all the other, the, all the leadership, the leadership of Noop is saying one thing, it's only him who is saying, no, I did not. So it is his word against the majority of the leadership in Noop. Now, I think having, and Honorable, right Honorable Kadag is one who, who, who brought us to this point partly. You remember the case of the NRM for Sun, mm. the search covers. When NRM took a decision and said, we are expelling, we are removing you from parliament, the speaker who was part of the decision in NRM's sake declined to implement what she said because she said she was conflicted. At that time, I argued. I said, the right honorable Kadaga should have disqualified herself from sitting in that particular neck sitting of that day mm. when she took that decision. But she did not. So when she came back to parliament, I think she took self-interest. First of all, populist, but two, in, in the false hope that she was... It, it, it appears... No, from, from, no, no. From, 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 just, just protecting from, the, from, the, 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 the members clarity. of parliament. No, for clarity. Yes. It appears under the decision of court. Yeah. No, no, no. In respect of that case. Uh, yes, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm I, I agree. Yes. I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. I think then court, although we can say court takes uh, uh, decisions independently, we cannot say with the infinite that it is not influenced by the environment. Well, well no, 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 no. We're no, looking at the interpretation. No, no, no. We, uh, just a minute. We're yes. looking at the interpretation of the law, and I saw a uh, speaker. Aneta Nita Mong is following the same. In her response, yes, followed the law. Uh, uh, no, and there no. is there is precedent from that uh, court decision, constitutional court decision, on the rebel MPs. And what Ivan is arguing here, he's saying, uh, look, we are a country of laws. If the law says one thing, you can't go against that. No, I, and I, I totally agree with you. Yes, I want to believe that in this particular circumstance of removing Fuga, now mm. the right honourable Aneta Mong is following the rules, the parliament, the administration of the Parliament Act, because in there she has cited in clear terms. But the other time, the right on the Bukadaga did it. Mm. She used her interpretation, interpretation as the presiding, uh, presiding, presiding, presiding officer. officer. And yes, eventually, the constitutional court agreed with her. Agreed with her. NRM chose not to pursue an appeal. Now, when you find that your colleague is trying to be clever by half, like in this case, Honorable Mpuga appeared to think that he's smarter than the NUP leadership in this particular matter. Mm. And having known that he's now going to be buttressed by the, the decision of the leadership in the parliament, who he said, I am, that's why he got now the courage to come back this week. Come back with courage to go into the commission uh, office Parliamentary Commission Office, mm. and that was the press conference of yesterday, I think, to say, by the way, I am a commission of parliament. Politically, what no, does that need, me, no, mean for no? No, even the choice, his choice of using the Parliamentary Commission to address yesterday's press conference, I think he was sending a message to look that, look, look here, you want to remove me from the commission? I am in the commission office, and I am addressing this press N conference. Now he's been there. suspended from uh, being yes. deputy president. Now, NOP decided to go to take refuge into the law, which now, according to Bowe, <laughs> doesn't apply. Mm. I leave that to them. Maybe they will eventually go to our politically. National, politically. Uh, national court. Now, but remember how NRM dealt with this matter as well. Mm. You remember after the speaker then stayed the search coupons, 
and gave them an ayo where to sit in the middle. Which many of us said, but in this parliament, there are not three dimensions, there are only two. Government, you remember, many people tried to make that point, but the Honorable Presiding Officer Kadaga said, no, the, my decision is final. And that's what happened. What did the NRM do? Mm -hmm. The NRM did not want to, to have a protracted fight with these guys. Honorable Nwagaba and Honorable Nseriko chose not to keep supporting the NRM side. Mm -hmm. However, the other two, I think reading from their constituencies, chose to come and say, although we were mistreated, we shall go back and fight internal war. Honorable mm -hmm. Sech Kubo and the Honorable Tinka Tinka Simre. Simre. You remember, mm -hmm. in the case of Honorable Sech Kubo, he even uh, postponed many of his personal activities until President Museven, the candidate, actually scheduled his campaign in his constituency to give him mileage. Yes. Now, the NRM has chosen, they don't talk about it, but because I'm part of it, I know the NRM has chosen, the NRM leadership has chosen never to entrust those with the leadership position in the parliament. It hadn't before, had it? It had. None of them had uh, the leadership uh, yes. position. NRM has chosen to deal with, no, no, not withdrawing them from the constituency, because the legal is not tenable, mm -hmm. but the NRM has said, okay, as the Baganda say, Mutu Zimude, you, you have uh, snubbed us, you think we are not important, but we shall not give you any assignment of seriousness in the leadership in parliament. And those two guys are making their 20 years in parliament, as you know, but the confidence of the leadership on them being given position of leadership in the parliament has come to pass. Mm. I don't know whether that is good for them or otherwise. Could that be the reason? With a, a, and, 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 and you have seen, and you have seen, and you have seen in this particular parliament, I think even the last one, generally speaking, you don't hear them much. You may even think they no longer exist in that parliament, except once in a while. When so, so, so is, uh, uh, is, is no principle being uh, handling the matter the way it should be handled politically? Politically, first of all, I think there was an internal process of listening to each other, mediation, and so on, which failed to yield the result in the time frame they had hoped. Okay. In the NRM, it was a little more protracted. Okay. Let me, let me, let me take I a message. This is not just for opposition parties, it's even the ruling parties. And le, le, in le, the le case of DP and UPC, mm -hmm. for example, you know it. Le, le, let me come back to you in a moment. I, 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 need to bring in, uh, I, I need to bring Martin Ojara in here, but I read a message from uh, uh, an elder, Chris Tushabe. Uh, this one is watching us from uh, Iruhura, somewhere in Kabarole district, and says, Noop impresses me on hating corruption. However, the way Mpuga is being handled portrays more of a witch hunt because he appears to be putting his eyes on presidency, which post appears to be ring-fenced. But if any UP stays strong against corruption, they will eventually win people's support because Ugandans are tired of corruption. Uh, uh, that is Mzee Krish Tushabe. I have a message here from Jose Nwabine who says, um, my advice to NUP leaders is that let them not relent on this matter. They should drag the bull by its horns. If they feel that what Impuga did falls within the definition of corruption or any other related crime, let them commence private prosecution against the arrogant man who I think has had an inflated sense of self-importance and thinks he is indispensable. Whether the DPP takes over the matter or not, Noop will have proved their resolve against these corrupt uh, who have been duping Ugandans for a long time that they are clean, whereas not. Let Bobby continue exposing the hypocrites. Uh, Jose Nwabine, I believe in Kabula, Liantonde somewhere. I have a message from, um, yes, Jack Apuli is watching us from Fort Port and says, how does someone withdraw a nomination after an election? I thought the party's powers stop at nomination, but when someone has been voted, it's the voters to call back the individual. Does a president have powers to sack a vice president without the approval of the Central Executive Committee? 
of that party. I, I don't have uh, benefit of looking at the NUP uh, constitution. Um, l l let me just give um, one, yes, two minutes to Honorable Martin Ojara Mapenduzi before we take a break. Honorable Mapenduzi, political parties are in some kind of crisis. Uganda People's Congress has been battling in court. They have uh, a ruling uh, from court that has uh, been on, I think, for more than one and a half years. Any attempts at reconciliation, I don't know if there's any effort at reconciliation within the party going on. If it has been, it has failed. The Democratic Party is split in the middle. No reconciliation is happening there. Forum for Democratic Change. One section is moving on. Uh, that's the party you belonged to he's before. He's actually pointing at me. Yeah, he's pointing <laughs> at you because you were there before. <laughs> Um, Forum for Democratic Change, your former party. You haven't reconciled with it. There was, uh, there have been several splits uh, from it. Reconciliation is an alien word there. Now, National Unity Platform, from what we have just seen, that letter, the latest uh, to come out of uh, uh, Kavule, Makere Kavule, mm. suggests reconciliation is not on the cards. What does this mean for political parties, especially in the opposition? Well, um, a lot of these things are rather unfortunate because um, parties have to build systems that work and concentrate on building the base so a political party can be able to, to take power. And in this case, the focus uh, should have been the NRM. But when you see what is going on right now, uh, look at the different political parties. The NRM is busy preparing for the next election. They have been through an exercise, you know, registering their members and, and many other activities that they're doing internally. The FDC is struggling when you go across the country uh, there is now FDC Najana Kumbi and FDC Katonga, mm. which probably is on, on its way to, to have a new formation or something uh, of that kind, because recently they said they would be doing consultation, countrywide consultation. But when you go up country and try to interact, you find even at that level, FDC is divided. There are those who, you know, they have separate meetings and all that. And then again, just as you say it, the Democratic Party. I think there are two parties that are trying, much as the UPC mm. has issues. I think internally, they are beginning to talk. This is what I got to know recently. Mm. I met one of the leaders. And uh, I think the two by-elections they had in, in, and in, in Laos sub-region, mm. Yam and Dokolo, has, has given them something to reflect, to reflect on. So they're beginning to have internal discussion and say, look, if we are able to get this, why don't we reorganize and, and talk mm. and actually concentrate more on getting more MPs and getting more leaders? So maybe that is going to help them to, to um, put, put their struggle on hold and begin to think more about how they can uh, revive the party. And right. But the rest of the parties, um, what we are seeing right now is, is of course, is not a new thing. But I think the NRM, just as uh, uh, Ladiro Fondo Fondo put it, I think the NRM has, um, maybe because they, they are you know, in power, they have concentrated more on trying to consolidate and uh, get more members. But from the side of the opposition, it is worrying because as we approach 20 to, uh, 2026, mm. what I see in NUP, of course I have, I have not had the opportunity to read their constitution. I know as an institution they have their internal you know, uh, mechanisms where they, how, how they manage their issues and all that. But from the outside, there are two things you will see. One is a party trying to prove that they actually practice what they preach because they have been uh, talking about fighting corruption and so on. So they are trying to show to the public that actually we practice what we preach, all right? 
So that's what they're trying to, to demonstrate. And that is meant for the public. I think probably that is the direction they have taken as they approach 2026. Mm. To, to show to the public that from the inside we can do this. How, but su how sustain? Yes, but? But, again, that has, that has serious repercussions. There are serious consequences on some of the steps that are being taken by, by NUP. First, it demonstrates that probably their internal systems are not strong enough. And I'll tell you why. One, recently you had, I think one of their members, um, he, made, he made a public statement, the Honorable Abbott, Mm, uh, who cast a doubt on, on their own structure. Uh, he doubted even the formation of their National Executive Committee. Now, he's a member of parliament, mm. and the number of members of parliament who have the same opinion looks like even their own party members do not know how their own systems work, their structures. Because when you begin to hear from a national leader, a member of parliament, saying, you know, I even don't understand how the how NEC is formed and all that, that is one. That gives some kind of impression. The other thing um, looks like there are a lot of internal issues. I saw a letter written by, again, the Honorable Abed mm. Bonica a few days ago, a petition to the opposition chief whip, Honorable John Baptist, and uh, trying to create an impression that outside, uh, the, the way the citizens, some of their supporters look at the party, in as far as uh, the, uh, the law that parliament passed, the anti-homosexuality uh, mm. uh, law. So he, he, he brought a petition, uh, he petitioned the um, opposition chief whip, and there are num a number of things he's trying to point out, saying the citizens out there are beginning to doubt them and they need to sit down and reorganize themselves. Okay. But uh, the other thing, let's finally. Let's yes. ca can, can I pick it up after a very short oh, commercial break? You. I'll give you the opportunity. Okay. Uh, James Salem is watching us and says, if our Madam Speaker, Triple uh, A, would turn into our Lord Jesus Christ in 2024, she would say the first Ugandan who has never engaged in any corruption in Uganda should cast the first stone against Honorable Buga. John 7, 11. James Salemi, ardent follower of the show. It's uh, the week of uh, death and resurrection <laughs> and, and, and uh, he's referring. Who has never? Uh, basically, I think what Alem is trying to say, would the other members of NUP say, we have clean hands? They're seeking equity with clean hands. Let's take a break and pick this conversation <laughs> up in a moment. <laughs> We asked the children, how many of you brushed this morning? And this little boy, his hand didn't go up. And I said, well, why didn't you brush this morning? He said, my brother was using the toothbrush. If I'd waited for him, I would have been late for school. I'm sorry, I get a bit emotional when, when it comes to that. To be able to change a child's life, to be able to bring back that confidence about their smile, for me, is phenomenal. personal space. Why don't we send them packing? Or maybe not.
malaria is estimated to impair up to 60% of children's learning ability. So malaria prevention and control help improve our children's living, ensure children sleep under a mosquito net every day. This message is brought to you by At NCBA, we can tailor-make your SME business solution to suit your business. It's what we have done for over 50,000 businesses so far. 50,000? Mommy, that is 50,000 families with 50,000 meals every day and 50,000 dreams coming to life. We know that it's not about the business, but about caring for loved ones. Get NCBA SME Banking Solutions. The name is NCBA, and the numbers that matter to you matter to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. Are you having headache, sore throat, muscle pain, toothache, or fever? Then use Kiwamo Plus. Kiwamo Plus is strong on pain and gentle on stomach. It's available in all drug shops countrywide. It's not recommended for children under the age of 12 years. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Rachel! Rachel Rich! <laughs> the Queen Cobra! The password of the money! The original no spare parts! The eleventh commandment! The question and the answer! Bosses, I know you want money, but I'm also broke! Oh no! Money is not an object! These days, no more sorts me out anytime! In fact, my sister, let me also sort you out! Really? I've just sent you instructions on how to get a loan on Momo! I'm here for you. Can I borrow some tips? When you need a loan, you've got MTN Momo. We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Two are creeping into your personal space. Why don't we send them packing? Or maybe not. You're still watching The Frontline on NBS TV and the dilemma facing political parties, especially in the opposition. Do you crack the whip hard against Iran members or do you seek internal reconciliation? The National Unity Platform, the leading opposition political party, is facing that dilemma because uh, it's making a stand according to its fans and those who agree with the method they're following to say we do not support corruption and we smell some corruption here. So we'll take a firm stand. Others are saying, will that actually get the party to survive? Delgracious Mugisa is watching us from Rohamba in Ruteta Subcounty Kavala District and says, Chagulani should reduce speed and stop making decisions out of emotions. He should learn from Muzay Museveni and how patient he is. This has enabled NRM stay in power for the last 38 years. If Bobby keeps behaving in such a misguided matter, I tell you, NUP will not survive for the next two years. They're gracious. Mugisa. We're asking uh, a bit of that question. Let me take a few more messages before I come back to... George Muhimbise is watching us and says, um, Noop didn't follow the principles of natural justice. That you call Mpuga in the evening in an informal conversation, give him 24 hours to resign, even before 24 hours elapse, you issue a letter condemning him and describing him as corrupt and all manner of things, ETC. It was more of malice than fighting corruption. He did not fully enjoy his right to a fair hearing and a presumption of innocence. 
but also from a political perspective. They should have looked at the impact of such a decision, given that they are dealing with a senior leader, immediate uh, past leader of opposition, a vice president in a region where the party enjoys the most support. The timing itself was bad, given that we are heading for 2026 elections, and you would not want to have a political party that is divided ahead of elections. The whole thing has left the party ugly, disorganized, divided, and eventually weak. The way Opondo is defending NUP clearly shows the celebratory, the celebratory mood of NRM, <laughs> George Mohimbese, <laughs> who's watching us. <laughs> Um, uh, I wonder how these people called themselves that are opposition. They have accused, a l they have caused a lot of catastrophe. We have in this country called Uganda, they have, uh, uh, they have become blockers, brokers, meaning on side of public they pretend where they are not. For sure, let us not continue wasting Ugandans' time. Ugandan refugees will come from God, one day at a time. Anyone who still has hope, uh, uh, Ruben, you need to rework this message. Uh, it's becoming a bit difficult for me to uh, read all of it, and uh, I have many messages uh, to pick. So kindly rework that message and resend it back to me. I'll be glad to pick it up. Ambassador Harold Achema is watching us from Arua and says, what is happening in NUP and many Ugandan political parties is sad, disappointing and tragic for the future of the democracy in Uganda. Ugandans should bear in mind the fact that politics is a public service and a noble profession. And politics is a noble profession, prof uh, Ambassador? I'm not sure about that. And not a do or die struggle for power, acquired primarily for personal gain and to accumulate ill-gotten wealth by any means necessary. It appears to be the case in Uganda today. Let me go back to Martin Ojara Mapenduzi. And uh, you were going to your concluding point. On, on the crisis that political parties face today uh, at the crossroads. Do you reconcile? Do you take a hard stance? I, I don't know what this whole uh, Mpuga um, saga means for not going forward, and you have listened to some of the viewers um, no, giving re opinion. Re re reconciling or taking a hard stand depends on, is, is purely dependent on what the political party wants to achieve. Mm. So if you ask yourself what NUP wants to achieve from this, the answer may be definitely different from what you may think. What, what's your reading? And, and what I see is that um, um, from what has happened in the last few weeks, you will get to understand that Noop no longer values Mpuga. I don't think they look at him as an asset. Hmm. But Noop believes that because corruption is, is, is the biggest, is one of the biggest problem of, you know, in this country, Noop wants to capitalize on that. And so the question is, how is Noop going to drive this point to demonstrate that they are actually committed to fighting corruption? And to do it best, they have found someone they can use. And so it's, it's not going to matter to you. You will ask yourself whether the party values are um, Mpuga. But to Noop, they think this is an opportunity to demonstrate what they are trying to do. Mm. And so you are likely to see them going even an extra mile, taking even a more, a more tougher you know, decision. So the question is, do they, do they care about those individual members who have, who have built the party or they want to demonstrate? And so it's about survival outside there, mm. not internally. But that's, that, that has got serious consequences. But the other thing that we, we, we don't need to ignore is that there are serious internal issues in that party. And you can hear from the members. We interact with members of parliament and we hear a lot of that. The, the party has its, its own approach and believes that, you know, we need to get out, mobilize people and do this. But internally, there are a lot of issues, including the fear that uh, people, someone like Mpuga is likely to, 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 you know, to, to come out and run for president. So it's also about the struggle, internal struggles and all that. Now, how this is going to end, uh, probably we'll have to wait and see after 20, 2026. Mm. But I can assure you that if Noop as a party does not um, get to deal with how internal issues are handled, 
while not forgetting how to make sure you stick to your principles. It is not bad to fight corruption, okay? But from what many people are saying, and just like, you know, I see, looks like there are a lot of gaps that are being, you know, that are, are, are manifested in, in this entire process of handling the Mpuga, the internal issues and all that. The moment issues are handled because you have got other issues that you are trying to cover under, you are not likely to solve it. Mm. So the question of reconciliation, well, I don't know whether that is going to work, but what I have seen in FDC, because what has happened in FDC is purely a struggle for survival. Mm. There are those who want to survive and they think when you are under this, you are not likely to. So the best you can do, let's fight, let's scatter, let's start our own. That is it. So that's what we are likely to see. Do they value each other? Because it will reach you, a you point. You said no, no longer sees value in Impoga. Um, uh, in the FDC, do they value one another? Well, From I... From what you... I you unfortunately, you I'm, you not, I'm not competent enough to talk about uh, those political parties because they don't belong to, to yes, any. You, you once but belonged, you're a, you're a bit closer uh, uh, before re you became independent. Res respectfully, I left FDC. Mm. And, and, and I don't have any... <laughs> you are in transition. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Mm. See, look, I, I, when I joined FDC, it was my personal decision. Mm. And when I also left, that was it. I have to be respected. Mm. If you do not have any problem with me, the time I joined, why should you have a problem when I'm leaving? That's how people should be respected. Mm. So it's not bad. But what I'm saying is, you see, if NUP does not handle this carefully, there are leaders, there are people who believe in Mpoga and many others. Mm. There are also people in NUP who believe the processes are not being managed well. Now that has a serious implication on the party. So the party needs to look at all this while not massaging what they don't believe in. If it's corruption, deal with it. But build internal systems that work where people begin to believe that actually this is being handled, you know, transparently. Benjamin, let me come back to you. Um, uh, and, and please, uh, you, 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 you can take uh, the leverage to discuss other political parties. Uh, that I, I, one would imagine that at about a time like this, given our political environment, political parties would be working out how to spend, how to forge working together relationships with other political parties. Noop is lost in an internal fight. And, 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 and someone will look and say, can you manage this uh, almost puritanical approach to dealing with uh, allegations of corruption? Is this a stand that is sustainable? Uh, from where you sit, uh, what is the benefit for the party? How have we reached at the conclusion that NUP is not making bridges with other actors to see how to work together? Because I think that is a wrong foundation to start I, I, from. I'm a media practitioner. We pick information from you. In the last few weeks, you have issued letter after letter on Mpuga. Yeah, it does In the last few weeks, you have held discussions about Mpuga. You haven't indicated to us, not at a press conference you have called, not at a statement you have, uh, one of your leaders has issued, that we are reaching out and we are making this other progress for the party. So now you mm. can hear it from me that we are making progress. Mm. Uh, party activities are going on and we are in touch with other actors and not every political party activities are publicized. And when there is an urgent election year, so you, you, pu you, you put the Mpuga issue top of your priority list? Not at all. Yes. Maybe okay. that is the conclusion that you have no, drawn. No, no, you just said when there are urgent matters, you don't postpone them. Not every political party activity is yes. publicized. That is number one. Number two, there are several activities that are taking place. For example, today there was an activity at the party headquarters. I don't know if your journalistic skills picked it. And there are several other activities that are taking place. But maybe you have chosen to focus on this one because of its importance. But first of all, is that uh, as a political party, we, our comparative advantage is in public confidence. And therefore, matters that would lead to erosion of public confidence and trust are taken seriously. Number two is that this public confidence is born out of the commitment to 
common good. So if Katana is very resourceful to the party, and the party would benefit from him, but he engages in impropriety, the party would not hesitate to deal with that particular impropriety because Katana is resourceful, and then the party would choose expedience over what it should do. Number two is that when you are reprimanded by an institution for engaging in behavior that the party believes is improper, it does not mean that you can no longer be useful to the party. But it means that that particular behavior has been found improper, but you can still be useful to the F party and the party can be useful by to you. What process? Because uh, uh, from Ivan Boe here, other members and some of our viewers who have sent messages, y one, you don't seem to have followed proper process uh, from a chat to be converted into a meeting, uh, an informal conversation to be converted into a meeting, and uh, the principle of uh, fair trial. Maybe I can help you with information that when this information first came to the public, to be public knowledge, there was the informal chat that you have mentioned, that you have alluded to. And there were commitments made, but informally. And subsequent to that, the matter was referred to the National Executive Committee of the party, which is the supreme organ of our party. And the president, because he had made his views on the subject known, deliberately did not participate in the proceedings as the chairperson of that meeting, yet ordinarily he is. The Honorable Mpuga was written to and given time to respond, mm. a week, not 24 hours. So maybe the public needs to get well, the facts a, right. That, that was the view of, a, of uh, a viewer. And I'm helping the viewer and you with information. And there was a response, which the National Executive, Executive Committee did not find satisfactory. And on the basis of that, the decision was reached. So I don't know which process that you're talking about which was not followed. But, but, but for me, the broader discussion that we should have is not about these individuals. Because for us as individuals, we are part of a bigger picture called Uganda. And when we choose to subscribe to different organizations, we are part of these organizations. And I'm glad that when you are framing the, dis the topic for discussion, you focused on party discipline, which is a very broad subject. Mm. Many times, in the strict sense of the Westminster form of government, it is about the positions taken when legislators are voting in parliament. But I believe when you are forming this question, you had in mind a broad picture on the conduct of party members and leaders and things of that nature. The other aspect of the question is about whether parties should crack the whip or whether there should be reconciliation. My take on the same is that there should be a multi-pronged approach to these issues. One, they are, discipline is a very broad subject, but there are forms of indiscipline, for example, that relate to lack of common decency. You come late for meetings, you engage in thoughtless speech against the party and the party leaders and other people, and things of that nature. Mm. And so I think so, so those are excusable. I yes. think those are excusable. Mm. Uh, I think those are excusable. You can be subjected to a process and excusable. But there are forms of indiscipline that go against the core foundations of an organization. For example, if I subscribe to an organization that talks about equality, say gender equality, and I'm found to act in a manner that goes against what this party stands for as a core value, I think the party should be able to crack the whip, take disciplinary action, 
against me. Mm. And I have seen people drawing comparison. You say that, you know, some leaders f manage these things in a different way. But part of the problems we are facing now is that there is impunity. Why? Because when there is wrongdoing, sometimes on account of the importance in the political dynamics of an individual, action is not taken. So, and I believe that, for example, now, in this particular context, the, the, the focus should be, well, I cannot dictate the focus, mm. but people should applaud NUP for taking action against impropriety. There has been, this today when I was following the, the news, I saw in Rwanda, where one of the commissioners that sat in that meeting and received 400 million, this is improper. It is scandalous. You should not have engaged in this. Ugandans on social media, following the revelations, have been up in arms against the Speaker of Parliament, saying there has been impropriety and extreme abuse of authority and misuse of public resources. The, what should unite us mostly as people of Uganda today is to stand together and fight this abuse and misuse of public resources that we have all been crying about. But now, when people have taken leadership in solving a problem or showing at least the direction on how this problem should be dealt with, we are in on what about ism. Okay. Let me take a message from uh, Fred who says, uh, I am watching from Iganga. What I can tell you is that NUP, like UPC, DP, FDC, fell in a trap set by the obvious. And unfortunately, Bobby did not understand it, and now he's engulfed by it. I highly doubt if he will get 40 MPs in the coming elections. That's Fred in Iganga. Another viewer here says, uh, uh, who is this? I appreciate if you can put names against uh, some of these messages, because I'm receiving messages on my personal phone, and uh, I, I may not be able, yes, this is Aaron and Omusha from Barara City, who says, um, one of the reasons I like Mr. O.O. is how objective he is while discussing the shortcomings in the opposition. At a point when NRM should be celebrating due to the bickering in the NUP, it's a sign of maturity to see O.O. somehow sympathizing with the affected party. Honorable Matthias Mpuga should remember that most of his group, Namboze, Segona, Mpuga, Seung, and others, won elections due to the Bobby Wine and NUP effect. Let him respect the party leadership and understand that you can't have two lions in one territory. He should either improve his levels of tolerance or he quits NUP in peace. Let Council Katana tell us what new constitution stipulates in case Mpoga refuses to vacate office for the party, as he's already saying. Currently, such internal disorganization within the opposition parties and partly in the NRM impede the efforts of to realize free and fair elections in Uganda. Also, let's not forget that Parliament has become a house of deals, and we must hold these MPs and parliamentary leaders accountable. Aaron Ainominsha in Imbarara City. I have a message from uh, Kenneth, uh, yes, Kenneth Chamblesil in Fort Porto. He says, the happenings of the last month or so in Uganda's political position reminds me of W.B. Yeats' poem with the lines, turning and turning in the wedding in Gaia, the falcon cannot hear the falconer, Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. NUP is built solely on the person of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to read this. Uh, uh, Kenneth, I'm going to skip uh, some of your two descriptions of Chagulanyi, and as a result of his rash decisions, NUP is headed for collapse like a pack of cards. Uh, 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 I'll show you some of the words he has uh, used here that I, I find. That is unacceptable. Kenneth, that's unacceptable. Not on TV. Uh, Musei uh, Christo Shabas come back and says, "Truth be told, Nope is led by a populist and a dramatist. Old habits die hard. But the leadership in our times demands more of intellectual discourse than public display. The Kingdom of Uganda and the Catholic Church have aired out advice over this issue. Fighting corruption is acceptable, but in the case of Nope, it's a tragedy." in their style. Uh, that's from, uh, I have a message here from Eric. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, I think uh, the letter that uh, you are referring to, uh, someone has generously shared it. Eric, thank you very much for sharing this. Petition for a meeting of a lawful organ to debate and pronounce the party position on LGBTQ. Uh, this is written on 25th, 25th March, 2024. We're not going to uh, details of this at the moment. Uh, uh, we'll uh, pick it up on another occasion. Uh, Michael Chakulaga in uh, Kayunga Bugerere, what is the difference between dropping and firing? Because Mr. Seven has just done it to some of his ministers from the ministerial posts. And why only those, those ones out of 80 ministers? Uh, how come that the clueless person influences for the appointment of Mpuga into the post of LOP and commissioner? Oh, no. Forgotten my country. What is this? Uh, Michael, I can't make, make out your message. <laughs> Someone is saying, Charles, you're also corrupt only for tonight. <laughs> In quotation marks. <laughs> Why is there no woman on the panel? <laughs> I, 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 I plead guilty to that, uh, uh, Chris. I plead guilty to that complaint. Oo looks like a headmaster who has a leaked national exam. <laughs> he knows what's going on. His TV body language can tell the public. <laughs> James Salemi. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, uh, I have, uh, this message is from Baguma Joshua, who says, um, what's Benjamin's comment on the expired constitution that says the vice president is the lead of the party? Do you want to give him a quick answer? That's not our constitution. What does your constitution say? What does About your constitution what? say? About what? Vice president position and the position of the... No, it has the position president. of deputy presidents, yeah. not vice presidents. Not vice presidents. Yes. Where we stand now is that all we do as opposition parties is to play to the hands of the establishment of NRM. It is time for political parties to accept that there is need for, op to, for opposition, uh, to, to opposition national dialogue and see how to repurpose and refocus. Let us go for reconciliation. It has remained my plea to the FDC big people who are pulling apart. Uh, this is a message from East Bukonzo County in Kasese District. Uh, yes, the person sending it. Noop is kicking like a dying horse. Let the educated Katanas and Rubongoyas help Bobby Wine to do what is right. You can't send Smart Impuga out of the party and keep close to an excited Zake. Mukonyez Stephen Kahigwa. Ah, these messages are... That's harsh. Yes, uh, these... Me That's harsh. Uh, this is uh, John, Engineer John from Entebbe. Let those defending Mpuga and criticizing Noop know that you can't preach wine and serve Nguli. Mpuga should be honest to the fact that the money he received was illegal. Engineer John in Entebbe. The messages are so many. I, let me just take a message from Gift in uh, Nansana. Uh, Gift, your message is too long. It's grossly unfortunate that Noop's issues were handled the way they were. It's even more unfortunate than Mr. Mathias Mpuga and Samba who some people referred to as the gentleman of the time, has shown no difference with those he, ac he accuses of lacking basic knowledge about politics in as far as the handling of this issue is concerned, apart from using phrases seemingly demeaning the new leadership. Even as it is now, and going by the nature of Mr. Museveni and NRM's politics as government in power, Mpuga needs Noop more than Noop needs him now. If it was for the politics of the boardroom and intellectual debates, Maybe, but for now, he should put aside his good English and smartness, listen and abide by his party president, period. Ivan Bowe, I want you to pick it up from there. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, one, I want to state that uh, reconciliation uh, should be the first option. Mm. We should encourage it. But that process is only for the sober ones that for reconciliation to happen, the parties must be willing. And what brings about the, the willingness of the party is the respect that the, the, involve, the parties involved in, in the conflict mm. accord to each other. You get, you, when, you, when you beat me first, yeah, when you tag me, uh, and then you're saying, let us talk about it. 
feels different when you call me and say, I have heard this, uh, this allegation. Can we talk about it? What exactly happened? And we pick it from there. When you pick it from there, it makes much more sense. Uh, but also, I want to, to, to take the guidance of the Katikiro yesterday, so important, and uh, of the church as well, and other leaders at all levels. I, I think the timing of this last letter mm. is saying you advised us, but whatsoever you said does not make sense and does not concern us. Mm. That's how I interpret it, because the advice was only yesterday. Uh, you know? Yes, in the, letter, the letter actually is addressed, uh, is dated yesterday. But we, we received it. Yes, it has public become today. public today. Today. So uh, that's how I interpret it either way. Uh, the other thing is uh, that. Before you go, the other thing, uh, Ivan, uh, kindly indulge me. Uh, let's take a quick commercial break so that we're able to pick up um, the other thing that you're talking about. Uh, one, one of the bigger questions that we need to be uh, dealing with is do you sacrifice? what uh, NUP believes is the correct line, the correct stand against corruption over issues of managing the politics. Uh, but let's pick this conversation up okay. after a very short break. Welcome to the luxurious Hotel Brabard, your ultimate destination for relaxation and grandeur in Masaka City. Experience unmatched comfort in our magnificent and luxurious rooms, each designed to cater to your every need. For your business needs, we offer seven comfortable conference rooms with state-of-the-art facilities. Indulge in a culinary journey at our restaurant. Stay active and fit in our modern fitness center, equipped with the latest exercise equipment. Our sauna and steam bath facilities, perfect for rejuvenation. Take a dip in our refreshing swimming pool and bask in the tranquility of our lush poolside area. As the days turns into night, Hotel Brevard continues to shine with its enchanting illumination or unwind at our bar where you can savor exotic cocktails and beverages. Hotel Brevard Limited, where luxury meets tranquility. <laughs> oh, Sarah, these two are creeping into your personal space. Why don't we send them packing? Or maybe not. Exciting news for news lovers. The Now Post, your reliable source of swift and accurate news, has introduced its all new mobile friendly experience. We have upgraded your mobile news experience, giving you a slick, user friendly interface, making it easier than ever to stay informed. Embark on a new era of news exploration with Now Post, scrolling through with ease because it's seamless and lighter. Now post accurate news fast. Get ready to embark on an exhilarating journey through Uganda's first ever photojournalism exhibition through the lenses. Hosted by Uganda's photojournalist Isano Francis. Mark your calendars for April 19th at Next Media Park NCC. From 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., brace yourself for jaw-dropping stories captured in every frame. 
Tickets on sale, gold 100k, silver 50k, students 20k, and a table 1.5 million for 6 people. Don't miss this electrifying event that will leave you spellbound. Grab your tickets now. Hashtag through the lens as UG. Join us at the Concept Kickstarter 2024, a premier event for real estate, business and innovation enthusiasts. Scheduled from March 29th to the 30th at the Westin Waltham, Boston. This conference hosted by Brian Kayongo. What you are seeing here today, which is being done, you can do it. Brings together leading minds like Fat Guyen and Wusi Tembekwayo, among others. Dive into the world of business strategies, real estate insights, and groundbreaking ideas. Learn how to build generational wealth and make impact changes. With keynote speeches, engaging panel discussions, and a field tour, it's your getaway to the future of business and philanthropy. Grab your tickets now, $500 for executive and $750 for VIP access. Don't miss this transformative experience. You can book your tickets from our website, www.theconceptrealestate.com or call us on plus 256-773-190-333 or plus 1857-390-33 to make your bookings. Powered by... You're still watching the front line on NBS TV. I apologize. I may not be able to pick uh, more messages. Uh, my phone just runs off battery. I may not be able to pick some of the messages that you send me. But I appreciate I have seen uh, lots of messages. Um, Ken Mutenyo actually had a very interesting message. That let me see if I can um, pick it up. Uh, Ken Mutenyo says, uh, uh, we are being unfair to NOPE to assess it using tenets of a political party. It's a group that was simply brought. It has no known constitution. It's a lesson that you do not join something whose ideals you don't know. Is anybody surprised by what is happening in NUP? Ken, someone is going to ask, is anybody surprised by what is happening in the Democratic Party? Uh, uh, I, me? I think it's an unfair. <laughs> 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 he's also expressing the lack of information. Mm. <laughs> Why that? Uh, Juma Kadri, thank you for watching us. Uh, <laughs> Juma Kadri, thank you for watching, watching us Ken from uh, from Bundebujo. Uh, yes, sir. Ken shouldn't be allowed to get away with that. Eh. DP has a written constitution. Mm. Is it a better one? Uh, eh? Is is the, the Democratic the Party. They're taking it's, 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 it's president has a cooperation agreement <laughs> with, with the party chairman. <laughs> but Charles, 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 Ivan, Charles, Ivan, I put a question to you before no, you take no, a break. I, I, we, <laughs> please. Well, uh, as I said, uh, the, the second issue is that uh, I don't want uh, the leadership hmm. of uh, what is known to Daz Noop to take, uh, to take the country for a ride that they are fighting corruption. Uh, what are we fighting? Uh, uh, Mr. Katana, I didn't inter <laughs> interrupt you when you were speaking. And uh, I usually want us to respect each other. They are not fighting corruption. I think they are just taking events to score political wins internally. Uh, when you are home and there is an alleg one allegation of a child stealing sugar and there is also another allegation with proof of another stealing, uh, let's say, biscuits. Uh, and you say, well, we are fighting stealing as, <coughs> as, a, as a practice. I shall investigate A, but I shall not investigate B. But I shall defend B and punish A. As a parent, you're not fighting stealing, you're encouraging stealing. Uh, two, corruption begins at a point where you don't properly 
run a political party using known structures, proper structures. No, by uh, June 2023, had received 5.7 billion Ugandan shillings from the Electoral Commission legally. Have we even dared to ask as a country how they spent those public resources? The national treasury is here. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I am coming there. Mm. So uh, when we see what is happening, the corruption of cultis, uh, uh, cultism that whoever critiques NOOP, you can try it after this show. Say anything about NOOP, even if you're asking a, a, a question. All the foot soldiers, they call them foot soldiers, will come not to answer the question, but to, to, to air insults. What is worse is that the party president goes on a radio station, fully recorded, saying that that is actually still simple. More is coming of the same encouraging and fanning this uncivil behavior. That is corruption of the highest order. There is a quote by a gentleman that said the highest, the, the surest corruption is asking a youth to, uh, to, to elevate those whose views they agree with and uh, try to gag those whose views they don't agree with. So. Noob, as it is today, is not fighting corruption. I am convinced, I am convinced that when it came, uh, you know, I, 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 I've participated in also exposing as an extension of the parliamentary exhibition mm. of what has been happening. Yesterday, I think, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, I posted Honorable Senyum, went to Moronovia, asked for more per diem, spent less days, and claimed it. The same behavior that happened in Kenya with the visit of uh, Honorevo Segirinya, and it was refunded after he was exposed. Mm. You cannot tell me that that is not a serious issue to a political party that wants to fight corruption and abuse of public resources. You're coming to equity, Mr. Katana. Uh, Are you coming yes. with clean hands? Kindly, I'll be pleased to so, respond so, so, so to the questions um, asked. Uh, mm. to, to, conclude, to conclude is that um, perhaps we want, what, what motivates me is that I believe that for us to have an accountable government, an accountable opposition is an asset. And I want to see no being accountable in the way it manages its affairs, in the way it disciplines its members, them working within the law, practicing what they preach. And I also want to, to extend the same advice to other political parties. Whatsoever the case is, follow the law. Apply laws to everyone. Do not build cults. Do not build cults. Cults are dangerous. And we, we need to have sober politics where we have space to communicate to each other, even in disagreement. Benjamin, I'll so, give you the uh, first uh, time. Uh, Thank uh, you. To mm. conclude it, uh, <laughs> to conclude it, to wrap it up, uh, maintain my position that the ongoing fracas is not a fight about corruption. It's far away. Uh, uh, thank you, Charles. My brother, Ivan here, <laughs> reminds me of the proverbial and decided chief who gives people meat, says, don't roast it, don't cook it, but I want it to to be eaten. He's making a case for not disciplining a near and person. He's saying fight corruption. And that is not it. So mm. uh, let me help you with information. 
we have talked about money that NUP has received from the consolidated fund. Before the release of any money, NUP must account, and this is on public record. So you are saying we are not, there is no information available, but let me guide you and help you that it is information available to the public and you can acquire it both from the party and from electoral commission. But also, there are visible things that we have been doing. You have seen the party headquarters, we are running party offices, and we are doing a number of other things. So running a party requires money and expenditure. But if you want to access that information, it is available. But don't go to Nasa Road like where you go to the constitution <laughs> you have from. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I have seen but secondly, I, 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 he, he, he did the flip his uh, file here. And uh, where he quotes the minutes, I, I see stamps from your office. I don't know if uh, the Well, but even stamps are available to Nasa. Mm. Yes. See, but <laughs> but, but <laughs> let's not provide what is not from Nasa. I was I not asked to come time. here with the documents. I was asked to come mm. here and discuss <laughs> about the discipline. Mm. <laughs> so secondly, but he but talks but about it's officers. It's to dismiss his documents without yes. looking at them. I have. And saying. Because he has even quoted things that do not exist in our constitution. He's talking about mm. vice presidents. Mm who are not provided for in our constitution. So even without going through, by giving information that does not exist in our constitution, Mr. Katan, it means that he's relying on the wrong document. There has been a public debate about whether you actually have a valid constitution for your party or not. But the party cannot operate without a constitution. That is basic yes, knowledge. Yes, you inherited a constitution. When did you amend it? The, the new the constitution is in the is, a, is an, an ongoing process. Do you have a but constitution? the constitution then? that we inherited, we have it, and mm. it's a copy that the electoral commission and you can obtain it. But uh, I think, Chan, mm. you are taking us into red herrings. Exactly. The people who should uh, contest the validity of a party constitution should be its members. If you are not a member of uh, that political party, why would you bother? It's a public try, institution. No. It's a public no, institution no, 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 receiving no. public funding, and especially in the context of what you asked us to come and discuss, discuss. we are not in the internal mechanisms of the parties. The nitty gritty is for those parties to know if they are following. Now, whoever is displeased by the steps a party is taking against its member, and if he's a member of that party. They are appealant mechanism. Mr. Pondo, uh, yes. with, with, with due respect, a party that receives a portion of public funding. Uh, are you saying the, are you saying the government by of Uganda by the no, but are you saying the government of Uganda is giving a non existing entity? Non existing by not having a valid constitution registered by the Electoral Commission, public money, is that what you are saying? No, no, I think the argument is... And, I, and I can also help him with information. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. no, I, I can also I help him with information. I, I, I think that the argument in the case uh, people uh, like Ivan Bowe are raising is slightly different. No, 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 but you see, if you, allow, if you allow Mr. Ivan, Ivan Bowe to mm. come with a pile of documents, mm. that only he has it. And in the nature of the structure of this debate, you are not going to shuffle those documents to us to cross-reference whether that document is actually valid. You are doing a disservice, first of all, to we, the panelists, but also to the audience. The audience. Mm. And so I think it is pertinent that we discuss matters of practicality of the accusations that are going on. And, and those accusations have a basis, don't they? They should have a basis. I don't think they have a basis in the documents that no, I No, no, no. I, am, I asked a very brought. general question about the Constitution. He can defend it. I will not go into the details. So like no, I don't going, have to defend it. I've given yes. information that we have a constitution. Yes. Ivan can obtain a copy from the party or from electoral commission. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the question of party funds, I, 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 I have given information that before we receive any release, and that is standard practice, you account, and there are various, uh, various stages of audit. But those documents, if Ivan is interested or any member of the public is interested, this is public information and he knows how public information is accessed. Mm. There is an established procedure. But I've also mentioned that there are visible things that, you have not, that have not just fallen from heaven. Acquisition of party headquarters and land and other assets and the offices that we run across the country. Th these are not run without money. 
but if he's interested in looking at the documents, they are available. Talking about the question of disciplining errant officers, if Ivan has information against an individual, let him avail it to the party and action will be taken. That's a challenge to you, Ivan. But avail the information to uh, the party. No, uh, you, you, you uh, most of the other things are questions of opinion. He's mm. talking about cartism, yeah, uh, which I think is really a figment yeah. of his imagination and other things. And I, and, 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 and I don't think I need to spend time responding to that. I would be unfair to the audience. Mm -hmm. Again, like I mentioned, the question of, uh, and I think there is a need to draw a distinction between party leaders, between views of individuals and party positions. If Ivan is engaging with members of the public whom he suspects to be supporters of NUP and he has altercations with them, he shouldn't take it to be a position of NUP. So I think the mistake he's making is that everything that he gets from the people that he suspects to be supporters of NUP wants to blame it on the party. But there is a very clear distinction between a party position and individual opinions. For example, he's, uh, he's giving individual opinions on a number of issues. I don't think he's representing an organization. Mm. There are many other Ugandans like him who give their views on any subject that is being discussed, and those views do not reflect the position of their respective Thank parties. Thank you. I need, I need to draw uh, Martin, Ma uh, Martin Majana Mapendoza and uh, Opono Pondo into the discussion. We have only about uh, a few minutes before we end the show. So let me start with uh, well Mapendoza, start. then I come I to Opono Pondo. Just, just as I told you, mm. we, you know, the solution is in understanding what each party wants to achieve. And that is the bottom line. If you want to know the direction this whole thing will take, you need to start first and you, know, you, you need to understand what exactly they want to achieve. Um, NUP has its own motive. And I think they have taken a decision that they will go to the All final way. extent. All mm -hmm. the way. And I don't, I don't think they are going to back, you know, to, 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 back. To, to, to back off or in any way have any compromise or even sit to talk. Because the letters you have been seeing have been coming, the tone has been consistent. Mm. And that is what they're doing. So to, to know it's, it's, it's a demonstration of what they, what they want to pursue, but deep down there, there could be many other factors that are at play, which they will not come out to explain. Now, it's, it's going to be, and, and of course, as they struggle to achieve what they want to achieve, and for me, my thinking is that they want to create an impression to the public that ours is to fight and we are not going to spare anybody. Mm. Uh, how they are doing it, whether the procedures or the processes are fair, whether it's not, you know, whether, whether it's which, some people may take it as witch hunt or blackmail, they will go that far. But it's also going to be upon Mpuga to decide what he wants to achieve. I think it's, uh, but also from, from, from the press conference yet, I think about a day or so, mm. you will begin to figure out the direction he wants to also pursue. Mm. I think what is coming is that he's determined to fight from the inside. And fighting from the inside is going to tear this part into two pieces. There are those who believe in him. And so they are likely to go the FDC way. You are likely to see another office, like the Katonga faction. So there will be those who will follow the Honorable Chagulanyi, and there are those who will follow Mpuga, because they believe whatever is being done is, is pure witch hunt. At, at a broader level, what does that mean for the opposition against it is uh, NRM that's been uh, not, not just in dominance only, not, for so long? Know, not, just only against, alternatives? not just only against NRM, it's mm. bad for our democracy. It's bad. Because political parties are supposed to build a strong internal system, create strong structures that can work to provide alternative ideas and prepare. 
Because uh, today, the Honorable uh, Fono Pondo is in power with his team. Uh, next time, there will be another group. And the question is going to be what kind of group? If all the, op you know, the opposition political parties are busy fighting, they're actually not putting any effort to get members from NRM. You find opposition political parties uh, Noob would want to get from FDC, FDC would want to get from the other, and Noob would want to have their internal struggle. FDC is doing the same, UPC is eating itself, the deep. That is the kind of situation we are faced with. And it's, it's, it's not good for our democracy. Uh, what lessons, uh, let's broaden this discussion. Just this week, uh, we had uh, those elections in Senegal that an opposition politician, two opposition politicians from the same political party, walked out of prison and within 10 days of walking out of prison, they win an election. A any lessons uh, that uh, political parties here can take? And, and, and they had a big fight the with the incumbent, political party and president, over whether the election itself would take place. And uh, uh, it postponed for the first time, for a second time, and then the incumbent president was forced to hold the election, which his party lost. And well, him was first not well. To obviously, run again. there are, there are, there are a lot of things to learn from uh, what happened in Senegal. Right. But you see, Uganda has it, its own style and history and environment, and so much as we have got a lot to learn from Senegal, we may not necessarily have them happen here. But you know, we can borrow uh, from 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 the experiences. Um, and the question is, if what, what, if, what is the kind of environment that they have got? Mm -hmm. What about how their political parties work? Do they, do, they, do they concentrate on fighting themselves? Or they are focused at changing government and they want to provide the alternative? Thank you. Oh, oh let, me, let, me, let me come to you. Um, one has been the question which I, I have kept away because you answered it uh, in last, last week about your own members in the NRM being held to account. But... The broader question is, you, you see what has been happening in other countries. Senegal is a good example. The opposition mm -hmm. works together and is able to win an election. And the focus now, you, you, you seem to be in a very comfortable position because the crisis is elsewhere outside of your party. No, I think uh, you should have a show. You call with the NRM people and they ask us whether we are in a comfortable position. Mm. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I want to deal quickly with three or four things you had said here. Yes. The idea that somebody is, is big. You see, there's a, there are many of you who think that Honobon Pugai was so big. How did he become very big? He became very big because Nob, especially the leadership of Nob, appointed him Lop. Simultaneously appointed him deputy chairperson for Buganda. Positions he had never held, even when he has been winning in Masaka. And I think that has given him a false sense that he's very powerful. But what's going on now is showing that he can actually be dragged, he can be deflated. And this is not just in Puga. Let us look at other political parties. You remember our own fight as NRM 2014, 2015 with our Secretary General. Mm -hmm. You remember the many accolades you had given, super person, super this, <laughs> super this, the engine of the NRM thinking. None of you stopped for a minute to say, wait, how did this person come to be? Because the NRM has for a long time run on the mentorship of President Museveni. And therefore, if he expresses his past public displeasure with you, chances of you rising again is very difficult. And not just the people in politics you have seen. The people who have walked out of NRM who have disagreed with him, even when you may say they are right, they don't find the easy out there. None of them, by the way, has had influence to change the direction either of NRM or of Uganda even when they have gone into the other formation. Cecilia Ogwan may have so rested in eternal peace. When she disagreed with Milton Obote in 2019, 
2005? No, 1996. Mm. Yes. Mm. When Obote said no UPC member should participate in the CA, Election. they participated. Obote warned them the second time nobody should, no UPC member or leader should participate in the NR in the 1996 general election. election yeah. They chose to participate by first of all by supporting same Margaret, but also coming back to stand for election. Obote dismissed Cecilia Gwal, Kule Park, Ben Wacha, Agura Wars in one route. Mm. As a consequence, Cecilia Gwal lost the parliamentary seat in the Lira Municipality mm. on the death of Obote, and she never recovered it. That's how she went to Dokolo. Do she, uh, uh, she never recovered the influence she had in UPC. By the time of her death, you would struggle to find out her locus stand I. Is she in opposition? Is she where? Agura War is the same thing. Omara Tubo the same thing, and so on and so on. So this idea you plant in the people that they are they, they are big. Yeah. Is it sometimes is a fallacy. Isn't that the same idea you're planting? Because you're saying no, 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 no. Uh, President yeah, no, Museveni. No, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 no President Museveni has fair. demonstrated. President I'm not Museveni in, in him. is very big mm -hmm. yes. in his party, so he controls things that happen. No, Milton, uh, Obote, uh, Milton Obote was very big, no, for, controlled no, what happened in UPC. Seven, from seven, listen, from Seven and, Mil very from big seven and no. Milton Obote, mm. I'm not planting. They have demonstrated. You can even see today, these elections, you are talking about this by election. Mm -hmm. The people are not campaigning with uh, uh, Ken, Jim, Jim Akena's uh, portrait. Mm. They were campaigning with Milton Obote's portrait. Milton Obote died nine years ago, but he can still whip emotion. Uh, Meaning, uh, Milton Obot actually died. Uh, I'm saying nine. No, nine? Th that's about no. 15 years ago. No, 15, 15, years 15 years ago, years. exactly. Mm. I had been underestimated, I mean, yes, undercalculated to, to 2005. Mm. But you can still see in the doko, nobody was putting on. Okay, I can a doko. So, oh, what we will be what country, so, so, what country, no, no. what politics, the, the, no, the, the, big men. The, yeah, the, the, that's, that's what we're running. But since we don't have time, now yes. I want to come to conclude with the one you're talking about, Senegal. I conclude with the first Chagulani. Hey. He's also becoming no, a yes. big man in his party. Chagur I had, I've said here before that mm. depending on how the leadership manages contradictions, the leadership may swim. Depending on how you Is manage that the good for our politics? The, the leadership may sink. And we have seen the ones who didn't manage the, 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 the contradictions well have sunk. Mr. Kizabisiji has sunk with the way he has handled the internal contradictions of FDC. Akena Doko, Akena and the, and the, and the Jimmy Akena. Jimmy Akena have sunk because of managing the internal contradictions in the UPC. My brother, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Mao, in spite of his uh, verbosity, <laughs> you can see that it will take him a long time and DP to, to resurrect, depending on how they have managed. For Bote and Mr. Museven, at least Museven, mm. in my assessment, he has still handled internal contradic contradictions of NRM relatively well, which gives him bias. Now, I want to conclude with what you're talking about. Senegal. Senegal. I have said this before. In 2005, do you remember what happened in Uganda? Kiza Besije comes from exile. Four years. Besije had run away from here in September, September 17th, I think, mm. of 2001. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come here. He feared to come back, but he picks courage. Why? Because of our naked threat with the people in charge of government in Uganda then. And he says, I dare you. And he dared, you remember, there was an issue whether he would be even allowed to land, whether he would be there and so on. He dared, and we arrested him in Busega, you remember? Mm -hmm. That shot his popularity and the actual vote, including members of parliament that he got, I think 42 in that election. And he, his popularity went to 37. You get it? We, 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 the people who are planning for NRM did not learn. We repeated it in 2020 with Chagulani. When Chagulani and the NOP began and the people power, we actually saw it as a wave 
that would subside if handled differently. Our Bayanako, our Bayanako, which bordered on impunity even, especially in here, in Busoga, and so on. You saw how we challenge, even without reaching certain districts, without having agents, right? And by the way, it, it was a build up from Arua. We, we, were, we were not learning, we were not learning on the mishandling. Have you now learned? I, I, I am now coming. And what, guess what happened? Chagulani goes to 36%. And not just 36 in confined in one place. He went on picking substantial, even where he did not have. I can tell you, Chagulani did not, he, he passed to Ororo, but go, go and see the votes there. Mm, my time he, is he, out. He, 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 he just passed. He just passed to Kasese. Go and see the votes there. But my my time passed. is out. So I need so, you to summarize. So, so, so <laughs> Senegal, part of the reason that the, the outcome came the way it is, is the way Mark Sally handled the contradictions in the country. Thank you. And NRM, mm. if, we, if we don't take serious stepping back, not with just Chagulani, anyone, if he comes up, and we do the same thing as we did in 2020. You and me will be on this show again, and then RM will be crying. Thank you. Um, uh, I get a quick comment from you on uh, Senegal, and a quick <laughs> comment from you in 30 seconds each. One minute, we'll get Without out of here. Without repeating what has been said, is to add that a day is a long time in politics. And yep. normally there are very many dynamics. But of course what must have aided is also the, the vigilance of the citizens which we need to build on in Uganda. For example, we are now discussing, we, are, we have narrowed the discussion on corruption to the Mbuga issue. Someone just sent a comment on Twitter when we were here and saying, these cultural and religious institutions that are giving advice on this small issue, what is their opinion on the misuse of public funds at parliament by the speaker? They are all quiet. So the, 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 what you would call the civil society the population and all these institutions have a job to do so that they are able to stand firm. Mark Sally had managed to manipulate processes, but the population stood firm. Thank and you. Eventually he yielded. Ivan. One, uh, I would say. Uh, and you'll have only one because uh, you have about 30 seconds. Uh, is that for us to have an accountable government, we must have an accountable opposition. But also, we have to make sure that our population focuses on what is important in terms of today, change of government, and changing the way things are run in this country. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, the Honorable Martin Ojara Mapenduzi from Bardege Laidi, Gulu City. Ofono Pondo from uh, Molanda. In Tororo. And I'm going to Miranda <laughs> today. Uh, Benjamin Katana from the National Unity Platform and Ivan Boe. Uh, I, I, Ivan Boe is an advocate and former guild president at Makerere University. For us, we have no villages. The other ones, we are introduced to. Yeah? <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> 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 you are from the ghetto. I get to be a villager. You are from the ghetto. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about the village, me, I know about the ghetto, so <laughs> I agree. I come from the <laughs> I know you come from Igara. I am the ghetto boy. <laughs> you're, you're hey. No, 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 you're not a ghetto boy. I know where you come from. <laughs> thank you very much to you all, our viewers, for joining us this evening and always. Thank you very much to the production crew that delivers the show nice to you. For me, uh, yeah, a happy good Friday billion. to all of you <laughs> and uh, wish you all a happy Sorry. Easter. Sorry. Yes. from.